It's your boy, Charles Yell Dorseman, rocking my cousin, the Dreaded Archer shirt. You know what I'm saying? We're, we're Dreaded Archers. It's a, it's a Dreaded Archery feeling around here. On my uh, second video segment podcast or video blog, rather, I guess, of uh, outdoor mental health. We're going to be shooting and talking today. Hope you guys want to join. Um, and smoking. God contrary to the belief, many old school hunters, um, drinking and smoking are not the same. People assume because I'm high while I'm shooting my bow that I don't shoot as well or uh, something. Or I'm too high to tell that it's not a elk, it's a deer or something weird. So some crazy stories out there of people mistaking animals for other animals. No. People have done this sober. People want to blame it on the devil's lettuce. This is some good lettuce. I'm going to put this out. But uh, today, I really want to focus on uh, <clears throat> the people you have in your life. You can have people in your life who add. You can have people in your life who subtract. You could be someone who subtracts from somebody else's life. I know that I've been someone who subtracts from somebody else's life. Not on purpose. Not in like a manipulative way, just like in a stressful way. My mom, I subtracted from her life for sure. Ah, she'll admit it. I've done some stressful things to stress her out. Like any mom would, right? Any mom's gonna stress, so. Uh, that's not the kind of people I'm talking about. And granted, if your kid is, is out and he's doing too much draining from you, then, then yeah, you, by any means, you have the right to, to do off with that. There's no need for any of that stress in your life. But for those people who continuously give you a false hope of good communication and people who continuously fall into the same bad habits, uh, we gotta do away with those people, All right? Bad habits could be anything. Bad habits could be, uh, oh. sorry, baby. Bad habits could be um, just constant arguing, constant, uh, constant bickering, right? Do away with those. Do away with that. There's no need for constant bickering, right? There's no need to worry about someone who's constantly draining from your life. That doesn't have a need, like a mom, and even then, or a dad, or, and even then, you know, you should, you should reduce contact at a respectful level. But uh, for those people who, you know, I hate to use the term, because it, uh, <sighs> kind of gets overused but uh the term gaslight uh, for those people who gaslight your situations and gaslight you into a false narrative that's a uh that's a toxic person that you need to do away with and they'll have you falling into those narratives at some points and sometimes you'll second guess yourself in the conversation and swear that hey i know i communicated very well but yet still there's a there's no grounds for for compromise um 
those people need to do away with. Those can people can be at work. Those people can be at school. Those people can be your business partners, your your friends, your family. Uh, and I understand sometimes it's difficult to create those degrees of separation. But um, if you don't, you'll find that you're living their life, not your life. No matter how much you improve, you're never really improving good enough for them. And for them, it's just a game of how much can you change for me? How much can you please me? How much can you make me happy? Well, for us, we kind of see happiness in our own light. Like we get our own happiness from things that we do, you know what I mean? Such as this. Um, I get my happiness from this right here. And um, you'll find that the people who are taking from your life and draining you probably don't really do much. They're probably very successful people. Actually probably have like a house. They probably have a car, maybe two. Uh, they probably have a job and maybe have a part-time job afterwards and they're making really good money, probably school, all that stuff. But all that, all that is done in some cases for external validation. A lot of that is done to please, to show off, to say, look what I've done, look where I'm at, look what I've accomplished. Um, for us, we create our own validation through things that we like to do and things that we want to do. And um, we're a little bit different in that light, right? So you want to definitely like start keying in on those red flags. And sometimes, not all the time, but sometimes the things that uh, piss them off, right? The things that drive them the most crazy are the things that they liked about you when you first met them at orientation or class or whatever. Your charisma, your outgoing personality, the fact that you do kind of as you do. Um, and really it's jealousy um, manifested in, uh, in uh, by, curious, by curiosity. And uh, through time, they'll use their manipulative ways to almost get you to second guess yourself and maybe even stop doing what you're doing. They might tell you that, you know, it's a waste of time or I'm selfish for doing these things that I'm doing. You're a selfish person because they don't do anything for themselves. They, uh, they only do for exterior, like what people want and people think that they should be doing. And I don't really know actually, but I know that these people are draining. And actually, I keep doing it. I fall back in the habit. I keep falling back in the habit. Making things a habit. Like I just fell back into a habit. I'm trying to stop my compound bow shooting. Maybe I shouldn't. Maybe it should just be that. Maybe it's maybe that's fine. Maybe I shouldn't stop. Hold on. Now I just had a whole like moment. Like I can compare archery to life in this way. Like right now I'm doing something that works. And it feels good. It feels natural. But do I change it to something else? It'll just take a little bit of effort to make that thing natural, but it'll probably work smoother or easier or different. I guess it depends. The way I'm doing it is I have a little bit further of a shot because my draw length is longer. But the way that I would be doing it, let me show you, the draw length is shorter. So my shot changes, which then 
changes everything. I don't go back as far, but it's faster. You know what? I, I should probably try both of them and just perfect both of them because there might be a shot that's within like 20 yards that I can just do that real quick, bow, and just get it in. While any other shot, while I have to set up past 20 yards, I can do my normal routine. That makes sense. And that's how you grow. See, let's try that again. Because I know that that is a point on 20 yard shot right there. Point on 20 yards, if I pull it right there, boom, it's gonna go straight 20 yards. But past 20 yards, I would have to raise it. Now, the thing is, if I do my first shot, which is pull all the way back, pull all the way back and bring it, that actually goes about six inches high at 20 yards. At 25 yards, it's about three inches, and I guess you can kind of, at 30 yards, it's sort of right at the, at the bullseye. At 35 yards, it's straight on. Past 35, I gotta raise it a couple of inches, maybe about four inches, and so on and so forth. So I'm thinking maybe if I'm past that 25 yard mark, I'll just do this. Boom, but if I'm not, then I'll just, uh, do this. Boom, and that's how you grow. And I guess you can apply that to life. In any situation at work, you might have to do one thing with one person one way, and another thing with a different person, a different way. Same thing with your family, your kids, so on and so forth. Life. But if it doesn't work, then you get rid of it. If there's no compromise or, or groove for your life and your situation, then get rid of it. Because I had no need to shoot it like that until I, oh, figured, hey, the only reason I'm not shooting like that is because I'm constantly focused on shooting at 30 yards and 35 yards with this bow. But that is a really good use to having it within 20 yards. So if it doesn't apply to what you need it for, then there's no real need to have it in your life or no real need to have them in your life. Toxic people are always gonna drain you, no matter what. And you can try and try and try to uh, try to appease them. You can try and try to try to uh, you know compromise with them. But what you're gonna find is, unfortunately, every time you get close to the marker, they're gonna move the marker significantly far away from you and make that a big deal and make that uh, progress that you've made seem like you haven't made any progress at all. And actually, you've gotten worse, and you need to change more and change more and change more and 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 um honestly who's got time for that you got to live your life you got to be happy with yourself you got to do things for you and um you can't find happiness in somebody else you have to find happiness within yourself and um, I got to tell you, something about grabbing this piece of carbon and gripping this piece of wood and grabbing this fine piece of string back over and over again, well, you can't hide from the truth. And the truth is really in the bullseye. And if you're in the bullseye, you gotta keep trying till you do. I'm Charles the Outdoorsman, talking about mental health in the outdoors, bridging minds, saving lives, one backstrap at a time. Peace. <laughs>